someone who wants to use social media tools to be, try to give a little bit of everything to everybody. So teachers can choose what they would like to learn and what they would like to learn. Our courses are daytime, so if they come here, they have, they have to come. Um, they have to find somebody in the school to do their lessons, a substitute teacher or some colleague. But the, our courses are in the daytime. They are not not very often in the evenings or on weekends. Sometimes, but usually the, uh, at the time of the lessons when the teachers are normally working. Um, So we try to give uh, topics to teachers who are, who are not very good in computers yet. We have tried to give something to them. But we also try to offer something to teachers who have done a lot. For instance, Blender. It's a program where you can, you can do a 3D animation. You can do a 3D movie if you want. Shrek. Something similar. But uh, it's, not for, not, it's not for every teacher. But it's, it's for some teachers. I guess. We also have a... a, a Two months ago, we had a course about how to make games in the classroom with children, computer games, how to create computer games. That's not for every teacher, but some teachers would like to do that. This is a one uh, English teacher who is who videotaped his own like he was teaching one very small topic, maybe two minutes. He videotaped it and video, and now he is uh, editing it for YouTube. So it's now on YouTube. Yeah, for his students and everybody else to see. That's one example of how to use YouTube in your own work. For our training, we organize lots of courses ourselves. We do we do everything from the beginning to the end. Planning, we get the trainers and everything. Sometimes people sort of uh, request an order to post from us. For, for instance, cities around the world. Sometimes they tell us that we need a we need a post on this topic. Can you do it for us? Yes, we can. Um, we have lots of lots of projects in this uh, school department of department education at the moment. So some projects, even if the projects are not ICT projects, they are maybe about language learning or whatever, there might be a, something they would like to do with ICT, so we have one of that. There's a project there, so it's like a, quite a large language project. It's about three years now, so one aspect, it's only one aspect in that is ICT, within ICT. But when they do that, we are going to get into that. But we also do have projects which are, which are all about ICT, but I know that not all projects are like that. We have partners, we have some uh, training centers around Finland who would like to come to Turku and uh, have training here. So we do cooperation with them. When we come here, we tell our teacher that if this is a possibility to, to come here, and they give it here for the teachers in the city. And the good thing about it is that usually it doesn't cost us anything, so that's why we want to do it. They have, uh, they have the funding and they just want to. They just need to find in another city. Point of from Helsinki University is the University of Helsinki has this training center called Parmenia. They have most of the courses they have in Helsinki, of course, but sometimes they also would like to do the same thing somewhere else. It's not in Turku. They have new teachers to train. And there are also other trainings happening in this uh, center, which are not organized by us, but it happens here. For instance, this, this room is very often used for all kinds of trainings that have nothing to do with us really, but uh, they just happen here. But the main thing is that all our training is always free for every teacher who works in the city of Turku. So if you if you are a teacher here, everything is everything here is always free for you. We get funding from uh, uh, from the city partly, but uh, we also get lots of funding from the state. We uh, apply money from the state for, to, to, to have training teachers. And we, we usually get it. So we have uh, state funded and city funded both. But I, I would say at the moment, at most, it's city funded actually. Uh, sorry, state funded. So, 
uh, when state funded is also always open for everybody else who is not working in the city of Turku, but if, the, if it's paid by the state, then it's open for even if you work in a neighboring town or wherever. And those are free for everybody. We also have these open workshops every now and then, once in every three weeks usually. There's a certain afternoon when teachers uh, can come if they want to. If they, if they want to do something with computers, they think they can mainly do it, but they maybe need a little bit of help. They want to do a PowerPoint presentation, or they want to do a blog, or a web page, or video editing, or something that uh, they need a, bit, a little bit of help with. So we have this time where they can come, they can use everything that we have here, and uh, if they need help, the help is then available. So we have to, people are, Saila and Mikko and Tero are ready to help them. So it's sort of a support to teachers who, who don't want to come to, or maybe not, not for a full course, but they need just a little bit of help. And they can come and go if they want, as they please. You don't have to register in advance or anything. Also try to try new things. This is a little HD video camera. Yeah, trying what to do with it. It's very cheap actually. You can get those quite cheaply and even if the children use it and they break it or lose it, it's not a big deal because they are not very expensive. We also develop things we try to find out new ways how to use ICT, social media, distance education, everything that's new, something we should try to find to use. Then we have these online services. I can show you a bit of it. We have this. This is our main web page, main website where this is the sort of the gateway where how teachers and students when they're in school, how, how, how they can access the things we have. I can tell you a little bit of them, actually. Separately. We have, of course, email for teachers and students. The teacher email we have nothing to do with, but the student email we have some connection to it. We have a learning platform called Moodle. Do you know? Mm -hmm. Does anybody know Moodle? Yes. Yeah. It's an open source, quite popular. So we have a Moodle here. Uh, then we have uh, some, all kinds of uh, learning materials. Some of them are in an open voice. This one is open for everybody and everywhere. So for instance, this one, this is something that you can use in your country if you want when you're back home. For instance, this is open for everybody. This is about European Parliament. For instance, there. Yeah. Hello, and welcome to our tour of the visitor center of the European Parliament in Brussels. Click on Start to begin the tour. Our tour starts from Rue Wiertz, where we are standing in front of the two main European Parliament buildings. And so on. We also have, uh, this, this is open for everybody, but we also have this, um, something that we have bought from the commercial publishers for every, every school to use. So uh, this is something that we also manage here in Top Center. We offer these materials for all schools to use. There are some uh, different subjects, different levels. It's mathematics and science and physics, chemistry, languages, mm -hmm. and so on. <coughs> even, even typing. We also have this web server where schools and individual teachers can uh, have their web websites. I can show you. Every teacher can have their own website if they want. Uh, for instance, uh, this is a page by one teacher. So we have this web server where you can have, where you can do anything you want. If you, if you have the abilities. 
Then we have every school can have the website here, and we have all kinds of websites also for different topics. For instance, mathematics, mathematics, and um, so on. I think this is something you may find interesting. We have television available in all for all computers, so we don't we don't buy com we don't we don't buy television sets to school anymore. So if you have a projector and you have a computer, you can use TV, and it works like this. I'll, uh, so you can do the, what I'm doing here. You can do this in every classroom. So you, can, you just pick the channel. And you can, this is live TV at the moment, channel 1. Suomalais-australialainen yhtiö etsii malmia lähiviikkoina eri puolilta Itä-Suomea. Etsinnät tehdään helikopterista kanadalaisella menetelmä. Uh, record it and they can show it the next day. And the, the way it works that if, if a one teacher finds a TV show and sets the record on, it comes to this list and now every teacher can use it. So even if one teacher records it, it's available for everybody for two weeks. So, and uh, this is also very easy. If, if this, all these are now available for everybody for, for, for a period of two weeks. Det är att det är väldigt mycket olika arter i miljöer, i kärn, på ägnar och i ljusa på att ta av skor. Så du behöver använda DVDs eller VHS-tapes eller något sånt. Ja, exakt för de äldre, om du har dem, men för de nya skolorna behöver du använda dem. It's also possible if you if you want for instance if, if if you would like to keep this for instance for longer than two weeks, there's a service that I could tell them please save this one for for a longer time. It's all it's two years or forever depending on the copyright of the TV show. There are some TV shows we can't record like uh, movies and uh, American TV shows we can't record those but uh, all these which are usually used for learning. And documentaries and news, those we can. That's allowed, that's legal. Yes. We have this uh, blog service where the teacher can have their blog. For instance, there's one teacher. So if you have this platform where you, you can start your own blog. Uh, we have this collection of photos you can use in school without worrying about copyrights. These are all available for schools. Actually, for everybody, anywhere, you can use this. You can use these photos at home if you want to, in your school projects. So, so that's one service. There's this collection of links. This is a very old service. This is from 1995. Collection and this, all these links are collected by teachers. So teachers have picked these links here and, and they have found them useful. Yes. So what happens tomorrow? We don't know yet. This is a smart floor <laughs> we don't have any i, I just saw this on, on, on you know in denmark once and I, I thought it was interesting i didn't i don't think it's very useful but it just tells you that people are always trying to find out new things and and that's what we are also trying to do here we try to if, if there's something new we try to check it out and to see if it's any good for us or not we don't have any of these
coming to the town. That was a very sort of a brief presentation of what we have here. Is there something? Are you interested in distance education? So, teachers in one place, and but students are somewhere else. Is that, is that something you would find interesting? I could tell you a little bit of that. Because uh, this has been a very successful project. Auntie, who is on the, on, uh, in the other room at the moment, occupied with the uh, teachers there, he is uh, running this project called Virta. Uh, the main idea about this project was that uh, uh, we wanted to find new ways to teach, especially languages, because of the it, it, it started situation is that we have to have 14 students in one school before you can start a group in an optional language, for instance, French or Spanish or German. Uh, everybody usually everybody learns uh, English and uh, Swedish, but all these other languages are more or less optional. So there was a situation, but there, there weren't enough people in one school to start a language on the fourth grade. So started to think that maybe this could be done using distance education, we could, use, uh, we could get students from two or three schools together using the internet. Uh, this project is now uh, running, it's, it's uh, funded by the National Board of Education and also partly by the city of Turku. And the idea is to find out what can this uh, distance education do for us. Uh, so at the moment there are uh, teaching languages Languages through the system. I will, I will show you photos and maybe even a video if you want later on how that how that works in practice. But um, on the fourth grade, so the children are about age uh, 10, 11, 11 years old, around that age. So, so when they can start, they can choose a language if they want. And for instance, now in distance education, we have French, Swedish, and Spanish. Also, really Orthodox religion, which is which is not the main religion in Finland. But there are students here and there, and it's, it's, there has been lots of uh, the problem with that has been that uh, there are teachers in one school, and that there have also been taxis driving the children to one place for just one lesson or two lessons, and then again back. So the, 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 this was seen as an opportunity that, uh, that these children could learn that their religion without leaving their own school, they could do it from their school using the internet. Five teachers, actually I think there are a little more now, they are over there at the moment, 50 people 14 schools. And the systems we use is Adobe Connect. So it's a web conference system, but it, it's easy to use for teaching too. This is